Okay, um, hello everyone. Welcome to the Singularity CE community call for May. Uh, we are recording this. It'll be posted on YouTube for people uh, who can't join us uh, live for whatever reason. Um, so today on the agenda, we're gonna go through quite a bit of stuff. We've got a, a look at the uh, 3.10 uh, release candidate and uh, features in that. And then uh, Adam and Mike have some updates on uh, software bill of materials work and uh, things around uh, remote builds, uh, improvements there. Uh, so I'm gonna kick off um, by talking a bit about the uh, upcoming Singularity CE 3.10 release. Uh, we've just put out uh, the first release candidate for this. And uh, the plan is that uh, hopefully we can uh, gain some uh, feedback as people test it and uh, the final release for 3.10 uh, the first uh, stable release for that will be in around two weeks time uh, so there's a lot of stuff that's uh, gone on uh, development wise uh, this cycle uh, but much of it um, if you scroll through the release notes talks about the oci commands um, now, admittedly, these are things that not a lot of users um, have experience with. Uh, Singularity has had for uh, some time now a mode of operation where uh, it fits in directly with how a low-level OCI container runtime uh, works, the states of uh, OCI containers, uh, the configuration files that drive OCI runtimes and so on, which is a bit different from Singularity's kind of native way of working, um, which is uh, more suited to interactive and batch use on HPC and shared systems. Now, uh, in our roadmap, uh, we're looking forward to uh, improving OCI compatibility and um, native support of OCI images, which are uh, encapsulated in SIF uh, rather than being translated to SIF. And um, this kind of OCI stuff here is really about um, starting down the road to that, um, towards Singularity uh, 4.0, where all of this will come together. Uh, so I'm not going to talk a, a great deal about that. Um, if you want to uh, read about this, uh, the user docs have been updated for the OCI commands and, and you can uh, try those things out yourself. Um, we scroll kind of down the list to the new features and, and functionalities. Um, what we, we've got here is uh, a bunch of stuff mentoring C groups and some things which uh, uh, allow you to apply resource limits uh, using C groups. And then some features which improve um, uh, compatibility uh, with Docker uh, and OCI runtime. So I want to um, today uh, demonstrate uh, some of that stuff because it's probably uh, what's most interesting to people in this 3.10 release. So let's start with the, the Docker and OCI compatibility stuff. Now, if you have any questions, just kind of shout out and uh, I'll answer them as we go. But uh, we'll look at um, uh, something called the no eval flag first, which is something we've added uh, that you can uh, turn on uh, when you need it. So the, the background for this is that if you're trying to run a Docker container um, and you're using environment variables or you, you're using arguments on the command line when you run the Docker container, uh, singularity in certain uh, circumstances is going to behave differently than Docker. So here's an example. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste into my terminal uh, a Docker command. Oh, sorry, I got uh, two lines pasted there. Let's clean that up. Okay. Uh, so here's a Docker command, okay? And what I'm doing in this Docker command is setting an environment variable date to the literal value dollar brackets date, and then echoing it in my Docker container. Now, um, if you've messed around with this and bash scripting and so on, you'll know that this is a, a subshell. Um, we ran this command uh, directly on the command line. Um, it would start a subshell, run the date command, and we, we'd see the actual output of the date command. 
Uh, but with Docker, we're quoting it in single quotes as we pass it in. And then when we echo it back, we get the, the literal value of, of this environment variable. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with uh, singularity. Okay, so if I run uh, the, the same kind of command, we'll note that singularity is running the date command here. It's evaluating this. So we're seeing the output of date rather than this, okay? Um, the reason for this is that singularity uh, has uh, quite a long history um, going back to um, 2 point X and before when it was written in a mix of sort of bash and C and Python. And we have um, bash scripts, shell scripts, which drive the setup of the container and handle environment variables and things. And in those scripts, um, it actually performs a, a single level of shell evaluation at runtime, which is why um, this ends up getting evaluated and we see the, the, the output of it rather than the literal dollar date. Now, uh, some people like this for certain reasons. Um, it's, uh, you know, if, you, if you're passing environment in from the host and things like that, in certain circumstances, it can be useful uh, to evaluate a variable like that. But it's a bit unusual um, because uh, this isn't the way that Docker works. This isn't what um, you know instructions about running a, a Docker image are going to expect. So what we've done in uh, three ten, it's one of the new features, is added a flag called uh, no eval here, and if you use this flag, you'll find that it has the the same behavior then as Docker. And we can also um, use the compact flag. And this turns on a bunch of things. It turns on extra containment, it cleans uh, the environment and so on, um, but it also enables no eval. So uh, no eval here is giving you uh, Docker uh, compatible handling of environment variables. Any questions about that one? Okay, the other kind of aspect where we differ uh, from Docker at the moment is um, handling arguments. So I'm going to set something up here. I'm going to set an environment variable on my host, and the variable is called Bob. And I've set it to a value of not Bob. Right, so let's paste in a command here. Now, this time, what I'm doing, I'm not setting an environment variable. I'm not using env. I'm not um, putting an environment variable into the container like that. What I'm doing is I'm um, asking Docker to run bash, and I'm telling the bash to run uh, this stuff. So what we expect is in the container, bash is going to run something, and it's going to export bob equals bob, and then echo the value of the environment variable bob. So if I run this, it comes back with Bob, uh, which is sort of what you'd expect there. If I uh, try the same thing with uh, Singularity, it comes back with not Bob. Um, so why is that happening? Well, um, just as when we looked at setting that, that date environment variable, uh, when we're passing things in in arguments to the container, uh, singularity is applying a, a level of uh, shell evaluation. So it is um, substituting dollar $bob for this value of bob before um, this export even runs. So it's kind of getting interpreted as export bob equals bob, but then echo not bob, right? So this is, uh, again, something that's confusing to people when uh, they might have uh, relatively complex uh, Docker examples passing in complex arguments, which could be evaluated uh, in, in a shell. Um, the no eval flag will get us back again to the Docker compliant behavior here. Um, so this is a, a, a relatively 
uh, kind of small addition on, on the face of it, but it's actually quite a big step towards uh, better compatibility in the Docker and OCI world. So if you use the no eval, or particularly if you turn on the dash dash compact flag, which brings other things in, um, we're now at a situation where um, more Docker images, uh, more commands using Docker images uh, will run as you expect than, than ever before. Okay, any, any questions on that? Great. The next thing I want to look at is um, applying resource limits. And I, I've been through this before uh, in these sessions, but we've actually kind of extended uh, what was shown before. So previously, um, in uh, older versions of Singularity, if you wanted to uh, limit the resources like the RAM or CPUs a, a container can use at runtime, you really had to do it uh, from the job scheduler or um, by some other means um, that, that controlled the environment in which you were running Singularity. Uh, we had a, a feature called apply C groups, which would take a TOML file which could list um, kind of restrictions or, or limits. And then we could apply that to a container, but we could only do it as the root user. So the first thing that we've done in 3.10, and uh, I've already demonstrated in the past, was that we uh, allowed apply C groups to be used by uh, anyone as long as you're on a system that supports the version two of the Linux C groups mechanism and uh, the system D C groups manager. Now that sort of sounds a bit complicated, uh, but in, in reality, it means if you're running a standard install of an up-to-date Linux distribution, then this will now work for you as a, as a non-root user. So the latest release of Ubuntu, it will work on, of Debian or of Fedora and so on. Um, we see here that uh, my, my TOML file put a limit on memory usage and I applied it, ran a, a memhog program asking it to use 10 gigabytes and when it exceeded the limit, it was killed. What we've done since the last demo is add a bunch of flags to apply limits uh, much more simply without having to worry about this TOML file. So I can ask for a memory limit of 100 megabytes for my container with a very simple memory flag. And um, the, the reasoning to kind of add this is so that number one, we're compatible with uh, Docker uh, and Podman and so on and the, the flags they take. And number two, to make it easier for people uh, who don't want to kind of dig into the documentation about C groups and work out how to, to write that TOML file. Um, the, the scenario this is going to be very useful in is if you're doing development work, testing work on, on a Linux laptop or a desktop, and uh, you're trying to use big scientific programs which use a lot of memory or a lot of CPU, um, but you don't want them to, to kind of bring your machine to a grinding halt or, or crash uh, stuff when things go out of memory. Um, so you can apply these limits um, uh, very simply then. You can also um, apply limits within a batch job if, if your system supports C groups V2. So um, we could run a batch job um, with a uh, you know, that the, the starts multiple containers and we could apply limits to each, each container. Uh, Dave, you have a question. Does the Cgroups V2 work with users? Sorry, the user and asked that, that uh, it was a, excuse me, a correction. <coughs> ah, spelling correction there by Zoom. Yeah, here we go. So uh, yeah, this will work uh, across the different uh, the different flows. Okay. I don't just have the ability to limit our RAM. Of course, the CPU limits are, are easy to apply. Uh, so I'm working on a machine with 24 CPU cores. 
I can um, go ahead and if my editor will let me copy the command, um, run a container uh, which has a benchmark in it asking for 20 CPUs. And, and these are the kind of gigaflops performance I'm seeing. Um, I can go ahead and I can run the uh, same container asking for only two CPUs allocated to the container. And we'll see it picks that up up here. And uh, we have much lower performance as we'd expect now because it's only using two CPUs. Uh, so this is a great thing for if you're doing test work, development work, and you want to not clobber your entire desktop machine. And also if you've got a cluster with a, a, a up-to-date uh, Linux distribution on it, then you can likely use it to, to set kind of sublimits inside jobs. Any other questions on, on this bit? Okay, the third thing I want to show very briefly is that we've added some uh, basic experimental support for uh, using squash views to uh, run containers um, from uh, SIF files in a user namespace flow, uh, unprivileged flow, without extracting them out to disk. So by default, if you run a, a SIF file um, in a user namespace flow or an unprivileged installation of Singularity, it has to convert the SIF image to a, a sandbox directory. It has to extract everything out. And uh, this can take time on large containers. It uh, uh, takes space in your temporary directory and it's, it's generally not um, as kind of friendly. You also uh, lose some kind of guarantees of, uh, reproducibility because um, it's uh, extracted into a directory and that directory could be modified by other processes uh, under the same user um, in, in theory as the container is running. With um, the current experimental functionality, if I add a flag called uh, SIF views, what will happen now is uh, Singularity C will call out to uh, the squash views program if it's on your system and use that to mount the container into uh, a temporary space and then it will run from there. Uh, so we're no longer extracting to disk, we're doing a user space mount. And uh, uh, when I exit, it's gonna unmount it and remove the temporary space where, where that was uh, coordinated. Uh, this is, uh, relatively limited at this point in time. We're implementing it in a, a specific way um, that accords with our roadmap going forward and how we're looking towards um, uh, further OCI compatibility. Uh, but the, the feature is there uh, and you can try it out and uh, make use of it if it's, if it's something uh, beneficial for, for your environment. We did run some benchmarks um, on, on this. And what we found is uh, that uh, really fuse uh, amount of a SIF doesn't affect uh, throughput very much. So you can still get very high throughput if you're doing big reads out of big files. It doesn't impact that a great deal. It was about, uh, I think 85% as, as fast as uh, the standard uh, use of SIP on my test system. Where it does slow things down is if you're doing lots of random reads or you're doing lots of metadata operations. And we saw um, that in that case, on, on my test machine, which has uh, lots of cores available, um, there was a, a very significant drop in the number of uh, IO operations that, that can be performed at any given time at the IOPS. And the main reason for this is that um, when Singularity uses uh, the kernel uh, SquashFS implementation to mount a SIF file and then run the container, uh, handling of the SIF file can be uh, multi-threaded. It can use multiple cores, but the uh, Squash Fuse program that we're using to do it in user space here uh, can't do that. It's limited to using one core, so it can't parallelize things, and, and that really slows down the uh, IOPS or small random reads where there's a lot of overhead 
but it doesn't slow down kind of bulk reads uh, quite so much. Okay, um, that will uh, do it for me for the, the demo of these, uh, these features. Uh, what we'd like to encourage is um, that uh, people grab the release candidate, install it on your desktop or a test system and try things out, see what's useful. If you uh, hit any bugs, let us know and we'll go ahead and look into those and we uh, try and get everything ironed out by the, the full release. Uh, so uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, just one last uh, time to ask any questions on 3.10 before I pass over to, to Adam. Okay, Adam's gonna talk about software bill of materials work. Thanks, DT. Uh, yeah, so getting started on uh, SOM work. Um, mentioned some of this work in the last call, I believe. Uh, we've made some good progress with the open source team on the Anchor side of things. So um, that's the team who puts out um, open source tools like SIFT. Um, and it's a little confusing here, but that's SYFT. Uh, and the goal here really is to add support for SIF, uh, the singularity image format in SIFT. Um, so, uh, you know, why would somebody want to do this? Well, um, start with, you know, what is a software bill of materials? Um, it's really what it sounds like. It's the, you know, understanding exactly what dependencies, what files, um, what versions of things are, are packaged into a container. So um, for anybody who's, you know, focused on the, the security of, of the software they're putting into an environment, um, this is kind of the first step, right? You need to know what's running inside the container before you can make a decision about um, this being, you know, of quality or not. So um, one way the security community as a whole is moving forward on this is really, you know, having um, developers document the, the containers they're building and, and publish things called software bill materials or SBOMs with those. Um, SIFT uh, by Anchors is, is um, one of the best open source tools out there to generate uh, a software bill materials from a given container. Um, today it works very well with you know OCI images, and uh, the goal here is is to bring um, support for SIF into SIFT, uh, so that you can uh, generate a, an SBOM directly from from a singularity image. So, um, you know the update on the work there. Uh, we had some back and forth with the Anchor team um, just on the implementation side uh, under the hood. Uh, SIFT actually doesn't require uh, much change at all, but um, an underlying library that they support for reading the contents of a given image called Stereoscope uh, is where the work has to be done. So um, Dimitri from our team and myself uh, have, have proposed two different ways forward there, uh, and we're uh, currently just waiting on reviews um, and uh, been attending the uh, Anchor open source community calls to discuss that as well. So. Uh, anticipating in the next few weeks, uh, fingers crossed, we'll um, we'll hopefully have that in, and uh, the goal would be, you know, on a future call here to to demo that and show what it actually looks like um, sifting through your SIF file to get an SBOM out of it. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's the update on the SBOM side with SIF. Thanks. Uh, oh, Dave, you got your hand up. Yeah, so does that require any changes to SIF? Um, no. Uh, so the, uh, so far, the work's all been done in the stereoscope. So um, the challenge there is yeah, stereoscope's very, uh, is structured to, to read OCI images. So um, we're, you know, looking at some of this going forward for um, the CE roadmap. Uh, how do we, you know, properly encapsulate OCI artifacts? Um, but today we have to work with the current format, which, as you know, doesn't have layers. It, it doesn't have a you know config JSON. It doesn't have a lot of these OCI defined um, structure to a, a SIF image. So um, the way we're going forward today is by actually putting a, a compatibility layer into Stereoscope. But in terms of SIF, um, this is you know directly reading from uh, from the SIF image and then um, using some Go code to parse it. Um, I will say that we do have um, the work that Dimitri did, um, did make use of the uh, Fuse stuff that's within SIF. So um, the same stuff that, that DT demoed, you know, backing the, the Fuse support for unprivileged uh, in Singular ACE. Uh, one of the two PRs does utilize that approach. Um, it doesn't look like we're going to take that approach in the, the final merge, but 
um, you know, it's still being reviewed by the Anchor team. So um, that's, I suppose, still up in the air and still up for debate. But um, yeah, not not anticipating any further changes uh, aside from, you know, perhaps relying on that few stuff if we do uh, end up taking that path. Great. Uh, anything else on that? Perfect. So um, the, the next thing, uh, Mike and Adam are down to give a, a bit of uh, update on uh, some work related to remote builds and improving uh, the, the kind of support for uh, handling files and those. Cool. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll start the update. And Mike, if you want to jump in and correct anything, uh, please do. Um, so, you know, at a high level, the goal here is uh, to, you know, make Singularity build dash dash remote work exactly the same uh, when you're doing a remote build as it does locally. That's, you know, kind of the user expectation. Um, one of the, the ways that, that, that is challenging or one of the things that doesn't work perfectly today is if you have a, a file section within your definition file. So um, this allows you to pull in files from the host system and then copy them within um, any of the build stages in, in the actual container that's being built. Um, obviously, if you have a local file and you reach out to a remote build, um, today what happens is, um, you know, it, it'll look for that on the remote system, but since that's a totally different file system, um, you don't have access to those files. So um, what uh, the work, and, and Mike's mostly doing the work on this, um, the, the work Mike's doing is, you know, can we provide a mechanism to upload that context kind of, so from the local system actually expose enough on the remote system so that that build can happen exactly like it does uh, locally and really keep up the theme of, um, you know, the, the ease of use. So um, a lot of people, you know, use this for, for a couple of different reasons. Um, one, it, it gives, if you don't have enough privilege and, and fake root isn't working in your environment for building, uh, you can easily reach out and get a build done that would normally require privilege. Um, and the other big one that we're seeing emerge is um, alternate architectures. So if I want to build a container image for an ARM-based cluster, but I've got an Intel workstation, um, this allows me to, um, you know, reach out and have uh, an actual hardware system build, uh, build that very quickly. So, um, the way we're going forward with this, um, there's, uh, uh, we, you know, the SES build client that, uh, Mike talked about in the last call, um, this is uh, an open source client that's pretty minimal and it really just allows you to, you know, kick off a remote build and, and, and uh, get the image back after it. Um, this is really designed for continuous integration systems, uh, you know, GitLab or GitHub um, kind of pipelines. Um, and so we're, we're going to be building it out there first. The, um, the, the goal, of course, is to also pull us into Singularity once uh, once we've got, got the implementation down. So um, the... Uh, I think we'll have a link in the agenda to um, the SES build client, but that's really the, the piece of Go code that houses both SES build, the, um, you know, the actual binary to get a build done, and the Go module at the developer level that, that allows you to interact with the build service. Um, and then uh, that's utilized by Singularity today to do the remote build. So, um, yeah. Uh, Mike, is there anything else uh, you want to add and anything else I missed there? No, I think that's pretty clear at this time. Hopefully we'll have an update in the next uh, call with uh, actually being this being available and everybody to, to be able to test it. Absolutely. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, uh, hand it back to you, DT. <laughs> okay then, uh, let's, uh, let's jump over uh, back to um, uh, some some more general discussion about what's going on in uh, Singularity uh, CE development and uh, releases. Uh, first thing to touch on then is um, uh, since we spoke uh, last time here, there was a, a 399 release. Um, you notice we're, we're uh, quite a big number now on, on the patch releases. Uh, we've made a, a kind of conscious decision in the, the 3.9 timeframe that we are, are backporting more to the stable uh, release and we're, we're issuing uh, releases uh, more quickly after bug fixes emerged uh, in response to um, some of the feedback we've had 
uh, about uh, getting access to those bug fixes easily in, in packages and so on, rather than having to, to build from source. Uh, but 399, uh, the principal thing that this uh, fixed was uh, for a long time, uh, Singularity has been interacting with uh, Docker Hub in a, a suboptimal way, right? So Docker Hub introduced um, limits on, on API requests uh, a while back. Uh, where if you're not registered um, quite quickly, you can be uh, denied the ability to pull images when you hit a limit of how, uh, how many you can do in a, in a two hour period, I think it is. Um, and if you have a, a free account, you get more. If you have a paid account, you get more. Um, now, what CE was doing was um, pulling images in a way um, that um, always used a GET request, even if it didn't need to um, actually pull the, the data of the images uh, because it had it cached already, right? So we, we always have to check whether, say, Docker Ubuntu has been updated on Docker Hub, but um, we can uh, do that uh, in a friendlier way to Docker Hub by asking Docker Hub for just the, the head of a manifest request. And then it will send us a hash and we can look at the, the hash, compare it to our cache without having to pull the whole manifest, which counts against the API limits. Um, the upshot of this is that uh, Singularity CE is now much friendlier to Docker Hub API limits. So you'll um, see them hit uh, less often, uh, which is especially helpful on, on shared systems where you might have a lot of people pulling uh, uh, say Docker Ubuntu latest from a single IP over and over. Um, the 399 also uh, added uh, packages for the latest Ubuntu. So if you scroll down the release page uh, now, you'll see that there are dev packages for Jammy uh, included uh, on the release. Because we're close to a uh, uh, a 310 release um, and development work has kind of concluded and we're into a release candidate stage. Uh, a lot of effort is now focused on um, documentation for that uh, upcoming release. If you go to the Scilabs.io docs page, that work appears as soon as it's kind of merged into the documentation repositories under the master branch unreleased link. So if you um, look at these, you'll see the new 3.10 stuff appearing. For example, if I jump over into here and I, I look at the uh, container resources page, this has been completely rewritten now um, to talk about C groups v2, what you need, and discuss uh, the flags that I was uh, demonstrating. So most of the user guide changes are now in place. <clears throat> there will be some updates to the uh, admin guide uh, as well coming. And then looking forward a bit, um, after the uh, 310 uh, release is all uh, buttoned down and we, we get that out in a couple of weeks, uh, we, we look forward to working on the, the features on the roadmap for 311. So 311 is where uh, some of the uh, benefits of the behind the scenes work we've been doing uh, become more clear with regard to OCI compatibility and, and where we're going. Um, we hope to um, circle back a bit on NVIDIA GPU support and, and see where NVIDIA is um, in relation to the uh, container device interface standard and whether we can kind of leverage that in the 3.11 timeframe. We're going to uh, remove some legacy stuff to simplify the code but the, the bulk of it is down to uh, this item here, which is where we want to uh, start having the ability to run um, OCI images in a, a native on this format with a, a true OCI runtime engine, uh, but this familiar singularity CLI. So this is where um, you'd be able to run an OCI image um, but you'd be able to use um, many of the flags uh, that you're familiar with with Singularity and have it uh, run quite nicely on a, on a shared system. Um, we're also down here 
hoping to have um, in the 311 timeframe full and privileged uh, support for, for SIF with squash views um, and bring that across the different flows and, and tidy it up. And it's, it's tied into the, the work we'll be doing on the, the other portions here. Any, any questions on that stuff? Okay, I guess uh, it, it's time to open the floor then. And uh, if anyone has any questions on any topic whatsoever, uh, please feel free to ask them and we'll do our best to, to answer or discuss those now. Are you gonna tell us if Bob is Bob or not Bob? Oh, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure. Um, I've uh, I've done that so many times. I'm confused. I think. <laughs> okay. Um, there's been quite a lot of talking uh, today. Quite a lot going on. Um, oh, Dave, you got your hand up. To talk talk a little more about the OCI compatibility. Is it your intention to change the default way? I know for experimental, it definitely will be an option, but would your intention be the future on to change the default behavior of run shell exec with make it more OCI compatible or is that would be just only with the dash dash compat flag, basically? I am 3.11. Um, well, at least later on. Yeah, yeah you said yeah, 3.11 yeah. is experimental, but even beyond that, then would it be? Yeah, I, I think um, I think looking at four, we're certainly considering this because um, you know, things like that argument handling and the NVAR handling, it, it just probably really makes more sense now if it works like um, uh, Docker and other OCI runtimes. And uh, our idea is to, to push forward into uh, more OCI compatibility and using an OCI low-level runtime ourselves. So it does make sense to, to move towards um, that compatible behavior um, rather than taking an OCI runtime and trying to uh, kind of work against the defaults it works later on. But um, we will be um, definitely talking to people about that. And we know that um, uh, changes to, to those types of handling um, are kind of a major version thing with uh, no disk period and, and uh, input from users required. Yeah, and I guess like it's worth making that explicit, right? That the the reason we're going about it this way of, of sort of gradually introducing it in experimental fashion is, um, you know, really meant to solicit feedback from users. Um, seeing there's CDs being built out of kind of user needs, and this was one that we heard very clearly as as a developer group. So um, coming at it from this angle allows you know people to dip their toes in. Um, Singular ACE still continues to work the way people expect today, um, but people looking towards the future for, um, you know, for any reason, whether they're uh, struggling to get an OCI image working today and they want to see if that'll work in the future, or, um, you know, if they're just make, trying to make sure their current workflow will work the same. Um, there'll be a period of, of a long period of, of uh, you know, where you can try that out and give feedback into the process and um, the reason 4.0 isn't solidified yet is because that's all driven by that feedback ultimately. So um, yeah, I mean, for anybody on this call or listening to this later, that's really our goal here is, is to get people, you know, trying this out and get feedback to drive the, the evolution of singularity. Anything else, Dave? Okay, well, we'll uh, wrap it up now, I think. Um, we'll post this on, on YouTube as, as usual uh, this afternoon. And uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, remember, if you, if you try uh, out the RC and you, you find anything which doesn't seem quite right, um, uh, reach us by GitHub issues, or if you um, are so sort of uncertain whether it's an issue or not, you want to, to chat about something, then Slack and the uh, Google group are, are great places for that. Uh, and we'll see you uh, next month at the uh, uh, same time. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everyone.